Hello everyone, this is Sebastian and I'm happy to welcome you to ITK Cybersecurity, your cybersecurity source for embedded devices. And today, I'm even more happy to welcome Tobias Nigis, one of the best experts on risk assessments I've ever had the chance to work with. So enjoy watching. Hello Tobias. Hi Sebastian. It's a pleasure for me to have you here for this interview on risk assessments and you're a real master on this topic. Thank you. So um, let's go into the details of cybersecurity risk assessment. But beforehand, I have a very abstract and general question. What is the actual why of a risk assessment for cybersecurity? A risk assessment is more or less the decision basis for all security related work that, that you're going to do it later on, um, starting from the concept all the way to incident response. So it helps you make informed decisions instead of just following gut feelings. Um, additionally, um, it also helps you to reduce the complexity because it summarizes all the important aspects from a system description over the risks uh, to requirements for the, the countermeasures. Mm -hmm. And when we are talking about the why, we should also talk about the what are the key facts of, of cybersecurity risk assessment. Yeah, you usually start with a with a model of the system that you're trying to, to analyze. As you know, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So we try to come up with a useful model of the system. Um, starting from documentation that we get, um, asking questions to the designers um, until we have a, a good understanding of the complete system. That's the first step. Uh, and once we have a good understanding, we can try to identify vulnerabilities of the system. Um, we also use a lot of questions for that. Uh, we like to call this the security mindset. Just questioning is the system designed uh, in a way as, as it's supposed to? What happens if I uh, manipulate this message? Is this still intended behavior? What happens if I uh, block messages on, on the other channel? These kinds of questions. And in the end, we come up with a list of, of vulnerabilities of the system. And then we have to assign a likelihood to each of the vulnerabilities. How likely is it that an attacker can abuse this? And also um, an impact what happens if an attacker succeeds in abusing this uh, this vulnerability? Uh, so likelihood and vulnerability uh, and impact uh, result in the risk. So that's the risk ana uh, analysis part basically. And then of course we document all of this. We also document um, system boundaries, which elements are outside of the scope of the analysis. Uh, what are requirements that we derive from the risks? Which risks have to be treated? Uh, information like this. Got you, got you. So due to the fact that there are so many different embedded devices in that word, um, it sounds super challenging to do that part, uh, uh, thing, to do that these risk assessments. It's definitely nothing uh, derived from a checklist or something like Absolutely. that. What would you say are the three biggest challenges for this topic? Yeah, so one of the biggest challenges is, is flexibility, to have a document that actually grows with the system. Um, another one is traceability, to actually see in the process of the security engineering process where the risk analysis, the initial step, uh, how the risks evolve over time. And then also methodology, which approach is best suited for the system that, that we're trying to, analysis, uh, to analyze. So you refer to the challenges as flexibility, traceability, and methodologies. Maybe we can elaborate on, on these uh, three a little bit more. What about flexibility? Yeah, as you know, whenever you start designing uh, a system, it's never directly fully specified. It's just an abstract uh, description in the beginning, and then over time you flesh out the system so that if you do a risk analysis in the initial phase of your uh, system design, the risk analysis also has to evolve over time. So you don't want to have a rigid document um, once in the beginning, but a document, a living document that evolves over time. 
But that also means that the modeling of the system that you have and the vulnerability listings and all the uh, elements that are relevant for the security of the product uh, are flexible enough so that you can add elements, remove elements, however the system changes over, over the course of time. Got you. So flexibility is a very important topic. What about traceability? Yeah, so if you uh, start with the initial risk analysis, as I mentioned, you will derive some requirements for a concept. You want to mitigate certain vulnerabilities. And in the concept, you, you specify a countermeasure for, uh, that should prevent this, uh, this vulnerability from being exploited. Um, but then in the end, um, you want to make sure that the risk is actually uh, mitigated with a second risk analysis, the residual risk analysis that takes into account all the countermeasures that, uh, that you implemented. And between the first, the initial and the residual risk analysis, you want to be able to, to, to trace the risks, to make clear why the risk changed in the way it changed. Uh, it's also very important for reviewing um, to, to understand what's going on. So the traceability um, within the documents is, is a key factor. Okay, I got you on that point where this is important. So the third thing you have uh, mentioned on the list of your challenges are methodologies. Mm -hmm. What about that topic? Yeah, as I said, depending on the kind of system that you try to analyze, um, you, you should choose a different methodology. Uh, methodology here means um, approach to modeling the system for the actual risk analysis. For instance, you could use a tech trees that would work for an ECU in the embedded uh, domain, or um, more of a, of a list if you talk about data centers, because it's a more or less structured system and, uh, and it's um, too complex to model completely with, with the tech trees, uh, but also how the uh, likelihood and impact is rated. Um, there's a lot of different methodologies out there. Evita, for instance, uh, Common Criteria proposes a lot of uh, ways to rate vulnerabilities uh, and, and risks. Um, and all of them are valid, uh, but it's important to, to find the right one for the system that, that we're looking at. Okay, okay, got you. So we have talked about the why of risk assessment and you made it pretty clear why a, a decent risk assessment is super important. You have talked about the major steps of a risk assessment and the three challenges, flexibility, traceability and methodologies. What would you say is your take-home message for everyone out, out there who is facing to do um, a risk assessment? My take-home message would be invest the money, invest the time into a good risk analysis. Don't just write a document. I mean, you can download a, a template from the internet and just fill it out. But it's better to have a, a fully structured document uh, considering all the aspects that we talked about, because in the end it helps you to get a better quality of security for your product. And it also helps you justify all the efforts that you invest in security to management or to uh, reviewers. Um, okay, w would you agree that we would say a risk assessment is as individual as the target products? Absolutely. Okay, thanks Tobias. It was a great pleasure to talk with you about risk assessments. Thank you. And we're looking forward to the next videos with super important topics around the security engineering process. Thanks again for Tobias.